secret, everybody's getting older, right? You can't really stop that. Every second of every day, we're all getting older. I feel like I'm getting older by leaps and bounds. Uh, it might be because I have four children and they seem to have boundless energy. And I wish I could bottle it and sell it because I'd be really rich, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. But one thing I've noticed is the older you get, you start using more like phrases. And there's this one phrase that, there, there's really two that I remember my dad said. One, he said, never say never. Because it, in his life, it seemed like anything he ever said, I will never have this, I will never do this. He said, I ended up somehow in my life getting to that point, whatever it was. So he's like, don't ever say never. Like, I'm never going to drive a minivan. And then you end up with four kids and you have to have a minivan or you can't drive anywhere. Or I'm never going to live on a hill. And that's where I grew up, was on a hill in Kentucky. So, But there's another phrase that I've heard people say is, if I had only known. Man, if I had only known those comic books were going to be worth so much, I wouldn't have left my mom throw them out. I had the original Spider-Man. If I had only known baseball cards would be a collector's item, I wouldn't have stuck them in the in the spokes of my wheel to make that cool motorcycle sound. So, so, and then, you know, I think all of us in our life have these, oh, if I'd only known, if i only known cell phones were going to take off, I wouldn't have invested in beepers. If i had only known, if i had only known that eating that whole pizza would make me feel so sick, I probably would have stopped at half of it, right? And it, there's a couple of things in my life where I can look back and say, oh, if i had only known. And one of them has to do with I grew up in Kentucky and not Texas. And Texas weather is just weird, okay? I mean, right, amen? Like today, it's 90 degrees and it's almost Thanksgiving. That's just weird, I'm sorry. I grew up where there were four seasons and whatever season it was, you knew what the weather was gonna be. Winter was cold, spring was mild and rainy, summer was hot, fall was in between, it was fine. But the leaves changed color, which was cool. But so, since I've lived in Texas, one thing that I've had found myself, if I'd only known, was if i had only known there was a cold front coming. Because we didn't have cold fronts in Kentucky. It never like dropped 40 degrees in four hours. And, and I remember the first cold front I experienced. See, I, I know now, my wife and my father-in-law, they watch the weather. Like they want to know what it's doing. I never cared because I'm like, oh, it's winter, it's gonna be cold, summer, hot, you know. I know these things. But Texas is different because it can be 80 and in four hours it will be 30 and you will be freezing. And one Thanksgiving we were at Mindy's parents and it was a beautiful like 80 degree day. We had a tent set up, like every cousin, aunt, uncle was there to eat. They had bouncy houses set up and we were playing. And Mindy told me, she's like, there's a cold front coming. And this was one of my first Thanksgivings in Texas. And I'm like, a what? She's like, it's gonna get really cold. And sure enough, you can see the cold front coming because everything's flat in Texas, well, at least where we were. You can see forever. And it came in, and it was freezing, and everybody goes running in the house, and we take down the tent we were eating under. But I didn't know the cold front was coming because I didn't pay attention to the weather. And we didn't even bring a jacket for ourselves or any of our kids. And so I was like, if I had known it was going to be this cold, I would have packed differently. So I had to run to Walmart and buy hoodies. So, so that was one. And then the other thing where I find myself, it's like, oh man, if we had only known. And it happens a lot with your first kid. You don't know anything with your first kid, okay? You can read all the books, you can think you know everything, but you realize how little you know when grandma or the mother-in-law leaves and you're stuck there with just the baby and you're like, what do I do with this? But you do your best. But you don't know how little you knew about your first kid until you have your second kid. And you realize all the stuff that you did with your first kid that you just are too tired to do with the second kid. Or, yeah, we'll say, or maybe you've gotten wiser. We'll say that. You've gotten wiser. And one of the things is with Vanessa, my oldest, when she would cry or something, we would try to like rock her to sleep, but that didn't work. So we had one of those exercise balls, you know, and we would sit on it and I would bounce her up and down until she fell asleep. So I remember bouncing her for hours and then we'd try to sneak in there and lay her down and hopefully she didn't wake up and if she did, we would go bounce her again. And with William, our second son, I remember bouncing him for a few minutes and he wasn't going to sleep so I laid him down and boom, 
went to sleep right like that. Because kids have to learn to put themselves to sleep. So that sometimes you have to let them cry a little bit. And there's all sorts of things with your first kid that you're like, you just, you just get wrong because you're trying to be a good parent, but you really don't know what you're doing. And then you figure out, ah, oh, it doesn't really hurt them, hopefully, in the long run. They're fine, right? Yeah, yeah, they're fine. So, but, but there's these things, and it's like, oh, if I had only known. If I had only known, maybe I wouldn't have bought this and saved my money. If I had only known I was going to live so long, maybe I would have taken better care of my body. If I had only known, maybe I would have ate healthier. Maybe I would have exercised more. So there's all these things in our life that we possibly could look back and say, oh, if I had only known. But what I don't want to happen to us is at the end of our days that we look back and we say, oh, if I had only known Jesus, how my life would be different. And, and especially because one day everybody's going to die. Like, it happens to everybody. Everybody has died. And we're going to stand face to face with the Holy God. And we're either going to hear, well done, good and faithful, or we're going to hear, depart from me, I never knew you. And, and what that is going to depend on is whether we know Jesus. So in this sermon series, what, what I hope we can do is we're going to look at the Gospel of John. And, and gospel just means good news. So this is the good news according to John. John was a disciple of Jesus. So he actually walked and talked and ate and learned from Jesus when Jesus was physically on this earth. But, but I think the key, the difference between those who will hear, well done, good and faithful one, and depart from me and never knew you, is knowing Jesus. In fact, Jesus himself said in John 17:3. He said, and this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So if you want to know, if somebody ever asks you, how do I know if I'm going to live forever? How do I know if I'm saved? Do you know God? Do you know God through Jesus Christ as he's been revealed to us in the scriptures? And are you getting to know him more? And does that change you to be like him? That's eternal life. It's not what we do. It's who we know. And that he knows us. So, so the idea behind this series is that over the next, well, counting today, four Sundays, we're going to, and the days in between, we're going to spend about 21 days in the book of John. So you have those little bookmarks if you see the bookmarks there? Those have on the back of them a checklist so you can read one chapter of John a day. And hopefully through that we learn to know God more. But we're going to start today in John 1. And Dave's already read it, but let's start in John 1, chapter 1, verse 1, and let's get to know Jesus. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him, not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now there's a lot in here we can learn about Jesus. Whenever you see word with a capital W, that's talking about Jesus. And we can find that out if we read through the rest of the chapter because it starts talking about Jesus Christ. And if we look at this, one thing that we can know is that Jesus is different from us. Okay? He was in the beginning. We weren't in the beginning. In the beginning was God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So the, Jesus is different from us. He's always existed. He always will exist. We also know that he was with God, he was God, and that all things were made through him. So right there, Jesus is different from us again. We are creation. God made us. He formed us. He breathed life into us. He made us male and female. But not Jesus. Jesus was the one through whom all things were made. Everything where it says here, 
without him not anything made that was made, I think what that's saying is everything that exists was made through Jesus. He's the creator. He's the one who holds all things together. I mean, think about the world we live in. I mean, just the world here, like how if anything gets out of whack, how it would just fall apart. I mean, I heard somebody say that like the universe is like 60 billion, billion miles long. I can't remember. It was so big my mind couldn't imagine it. But God made that just through a word. He spoke it into existence. And that's Jesus. So that's the first thing that I want us to see, is that Jesus is God the Son. Imagine that. Imagine the power God holds. He, he can do anything. There's nothing that he cannot do. He's all knowledgeable. He can see everything. He knows everything. This is who Jesus is. And he's different than us. He's the light. And that's the life of men. And the sad thing is that all men have sinned against God and turned from him. And instead of walking in the light in life, we walk in the darkness. And we walk in death. And where Jesus created the world is because of the sin of man that the world is falling apart. But Jesus is God the Son. All powerful. All knowledgeable. Every good thing you can think of, that's who Jesus is. Think of everything that was made. Think of your favorite animal. Your favorite food. The sun, the moon, the stars, galaxies, universes. Jesus made all of those. And, and what's so remarkable about that is that if we keep reading, God who is so much higher than us, and so much more knowledgeable and so much more powerful and is good and who doesn't sin. And verse 14, the first part, it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, anybody here just like grow up in church? I grew up in church, okay? Ever since I was young, my mom and dad, they were Christians. They took me to church all the time. So, so Jesus being born, like that's something I've heard all my life. You know, and Christmas, you know. Hey, it's Christmas. Christ is born. Jesus, the little baby in a manger. Maybe if you grew up in church like me, you had to be a shepherd or Joseph or an angel or something every Christmas and stand there in the pageant until you got old enough. You're like, yes, I don't have to do it anymore. But, but Christmas was celebrated because of the baby Jesus. But I think if you grew up in church, and maybe if you've heard, oh yeah, Jesus became a man, that you sort of lose sight of how miraculous that is. And, and I want to try to help us illustrate it. Does anybody in here like Disney movies? Grow up on, I grew up in church and I grew up watching Disney movies, okay? So if that helps you understand me, if that might help. But who remembers the movie Aladdin? Yeah, okay, so Aladdin had the genie in it, played by the late Robin Williams. And one line I remember from that movie is the genie, he's like, Phenomenal cosmic power! Beauty, pity, living space, right? He crams himself into the lamp. So, so Jesus didn't, doesn't just have phenomenal cosmic power. He has infinite power. There's no limit. He, he is power. Nothing exists unless he made it. And he wasn't held by like some weird rules of magic. No, he be like the genie was still the genie. He was just inside the lamp. But Jesus, who is God, became flesh. He became a baby. You know how helpless babies are? They can't hold up their head. Like every time a newborn is born, like, oh, can I hold him? Sure. Watch his head. It might fall off. You know, you know, it just, they can't hold it up. It just, oh, oh, God, watch his head, watch his head. They have to, like, develop the muscles to hold their old head up. And, and babies, they don't know their hands or their own hands. Have you ever seen a baby scare itself before it's old enough to realize, this is my hand? It'll be sitting there and it'll, huh, 
because its hand passes in front of them. Or, and then when they start to develop enough, they're like, wow, that's my hand. And it just amazes them, and they can do things. Jesus became that. He grew in the womb of his mother. So from like little bitty cells to like, you know, the peanut that you take the ultrasound of, and everybody's like, yeah, that's awesome. And he grew, and he, he became a baby. He was born. And he was totally helpless and totally dependent on his parents to take care of him. I mean, does that not just blow your mind that the God of the universe who needs help from no one became a helpless baby and couldn't even hold his head up? And he had to grow and he had to develop. And you know, everything in this life he would experience as a human. He probably, he had some brothers that probably picked on him, made fun of him, even though he was the oldest, so maybe not. You know, that helps. But he grew... He experienced all of humanity, all the fallenness of the world. He experienced all that. And you might be like, well, why would you do that? Why would God, who is all-powerful, almighty, who all things were made through him, why would he come down and become a baby? Why, you know, why would the powerful become powerless? Why would Jesus do that? And Philippians 2, 6, and 7 helps us get the mindset that Jesus thought of. It says, Who, referring to Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. So Jesus displays incredible humility. Jesus, God the Son, a man. And he did this, I believe the reason is in verses 9 through 14. Let's read those. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. See, here's the problem, is God made everything, and he made it good. We see this if we read the very first book of the Bible, Genesis. It's God spoke, and it was, and it was good. And then God made man, and it was very good. So man is unique among all of God's creation, because only when I say man, Okay, made of male and female. <laughs> humans were made to reflect the glory of God. Only humans in all of the creation that God made were made in God's image. So all of God's glory, all of God's power, all of God's creativity, all of God's goodness should be reflected through us. Everything we should do should point to God and say, look how great he is. But even though man walked with God, instead of where Jesus said equality with God isn't a thing to be grasped, man went the other way. He wanted to know what God knew. He wanted to be God. And so he rebelled and he sinned against God. And all of the Bible, the Old Testament, up to this point where Jesus came, is about how a loving, gracious God calling people to himself and why people may walk that way for a little while eventually they fall and turn away because it's, they walk in darkness and where it said there that he was coming to the world that the world did not know him it said he came to his own and his own people did not receive him and that's the, the people the Jewish people the nation of Israel who God had brought out of slavery, made them a nation. He was their king. And they rejected him, turned away from him. They're like, no, we want a king just like all the other kings. They had God as their king. There's no better king than that. But 
No, they wanted a god, a king they could see, a person. And it didn't go well for them. And it went so bad that right now, they're living under Roman rule at this time. But Jesus came, and he offers the light, but they did not receive him. But verse 12 says, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And see, this is why I believe God was born. I mean, think about that again. The God who made the stars, who made the moon, who made comets and all the heavenly bodies, who made every little insect and microbe, who made everything in the depths of the sea, who made all the plants. God who made all that decided to be born in the human flesh. And he did it so that he became a man, so that men may become children of God. Everybody is part of God's creation, but only those who believe in the name of Jesus, who know him, who walk in repentance and faith, will get to be called children. So that, I believe, is why Jesus came to earth why he was born. And what I hope for us, I hope that we won't be the people who even though they are shown the light of Christ, whether it's in his word, whether it's from another Christian, whether it's from his church, that we refuse to receive him. Because Christ is being offered to us. He came, he was born, he lived, he died, but death couldn't hold him because he had no sin. And because of that, he took our sins when he was on the cross. He was born so that he would die. He was born to set men free. He was born to die so that men may live. Jesus Christ became a man so men could be children of God. And what I hope is that as we read God's word and we get to know him and we see in our own lives how we walk in darkness, that we'll repent of that and we'll ask him to take our sin and give us his righteousness. And that's the work that Jesus did on the cross. That's why he was born. That's why he lived. That's why he died. Because our, our sins required death. And thankfully, because he came, if we will receive him, we can be children of God. And, and so here's one of my questions for us today. Is, have you received Jesus Christ? Have you looked at the God of everything as revealed in Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus Christ, and tried to understand who he is and realize I am unworthy of standing before a holy God. If I stood before God right now in my sin, all I would deserve is His wrath. But then have you seen how Jesus took that wrath Himself? He took our sins and He offers us His righteousness. And so have you asked God to forgive you of your sins and to give you new life in Christ? And then if you have, have you gone on to do what Jesus, what we'll see Jesus doing in the rest of the Gospel of John? is pointing others to God the Father through Jesus Christ and saying, Hey, do you know Jesus? Will you let me tell you about him? Because that's what we are as a church are supposed to do. I mean, the reason Dave and Heather planted New Brook Church was for people who did not know Jesus people who had never heard of him, that they might come to know Jesus. And so, if we know Jesus, if we understand who he is and why he came and what he's going to do, and that death couldn't hold him, but one day he's coming back again, are we trying to spread that message to other people so that they too may know Jesus and they'll be children of God? And, 
And so what I want us to remember from this, what I hope we've learned about Jesus today, is that God's birth, Jesus Christ being born, brings new life. And I hope each and every one of us here today have experienced that new life, that we've received Jesus so we can be called by his name. I just want to finish by reading 13 and 14. I'll start back in 12. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. I pray that will be true in our lives, that we see the grace and glory and goodness of God and we share that with others. Let me pray for us and then just have a few things to talk about what we're going to do the rest of this series. So, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you give us your word that reveals Jesus to us. And Lord, I pray that we will know him, Lord, first in salvation. And then, Lord, that we will continue to know him more and grow into the likeness of him. That John 17, 3 will be true of us, that we know God, that we know Jesus, his son. And because of that, we have eternal life. Lord, it, it, please don't let us not be amazed at what it means that you became human. That, that you who were so mighty would be humble. The only, only God who has no reason to be humble because you are everything would humble yourself and become a man. And not only that, you would Humble yourself to the point of death on the cross so that we may be saved. And God, I, I pray tonight for us who are Christians, Lord, if, if we have gotten so used to hearing your story that we just sort of gloss over it, Lord, that you will soften our hearts and open our eyes and renew our minds. Lord, if, if we haven't been seeking to know you in your word and with other believers and then sharing that with the Lord, world. Lord, let us repent of that now. I ask you to forgive us and let us walk in the newness of life that you give us. And Father, secondly, the second part of the prayer is if there's anyone in here who has never received you, who has never repented of their sins, who turned from them and turned to you, Lord, I pray they would do that now. Lord, that they would pray this prayer along with me. God, I know that I am a sinner and I am unworthy to stand before you, that I deserve your wrath and I deserve death. But Lord, I know that Jesus was born and that because he was born, he came and died on the cross and took the death I should have. And Lord, because of that, will you forgive my sin? You allow Jesus' righteousness to flow to me that I may become like him. Father, Jesus is Savior and Lord, and I ask for his forgiveness and newness of life. Father, I pray that that prayer would be something that would be on the hearts of all of us every day, that we would walk in the newness of life that you have given us, and that we may follow you. Father, I know there's a lot of people in our church who are sick tonight, but I pray that you would bless them with physical healing and spiritual growth.